Reverend Steve Benson and Reverend Stanley Benson. This afternoon session, I'm going to be very brief because I'm looking forward to Friday night. We'll be having a petition service. And I want to give you seven points that will be the introduction to this whole issue we are talking about. There can never be any meaningful evangelism without the grace of God. No, there can never. If you don't carry God's grace, in fact, even preaching is grace. Preaching is grace. How you can even get over your body is grace. Even being able to talk to the people to listen to you is grace. What you are seeing here is grace. But there are some people, their whole convention, this is their size. Here in Accra. Hmm? Somebody's convention that has made publicity, he's gone on TV, he's gone on radio. If you enter the place, this is the number of people. The number of people that would not make any difference. And yes, so some of you are just the people who will be idling around this afternoon that has been brought together here for an afternoon or morning service. So grace. So evangelism itself, oh yeah, you're allowed to clap. It must be the grace of God. Another thing that's very important before I give you the point is that the grace to evangelize is not man giving, it's God giving. You can never understand. That is why you don't have to compare yourself to somebody. Different graces. And Pastor Steve, ever since I got that revelation, I felt fulfilled in ministry. Yes. Now look at me here. How many of you know that I don't have any big church anywhere? And I'm Lawrence Tetter. By the grace of God, if I do billboards now in Accra, and I say I'm starting a church tomorrow, I'll get people to come. But that is not my place. If you know your place in ministry, you walk in your grace comfortably. Today, a lot of people are forcing to prophesy. No magba. No magba. Igba. Igba. A prophesy. Igba. A prophesy. A prophesy. Igba. Look at how many people prophesy. Okay. 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 Right, some people prophesy for black stars. Uh, some people prophesy. Oh, I see. I've been out of town. And what happened? Why well, they give time and what? Yeah, okay, see. So, but, so why worry yourself? If God has not spoken, why do you speak for God? The most important thing is to know the purpose of a calling, and that is the beginning of grace. So to begin with, grace means favor minus labor. Grace means what? Minus labor. Share. Sure. There's a favor you can have that you stand before kings and priests and big people and they listen to you. A lot of people wonder how a lot of uh, presidents became my friend. It's favor. It's not something extraordinary I do. How do you feel like when you get a call from Gaddafi's office? Yes, you get a call from Gaddafi's office. He wants to speak to you. How do you feel like if I'm at a few of them who are even listening to the call from behind, they are happy. Yes, they are happy. They mean that Charlie, no more than check it. Hey, Charlie, Gaddafi can no more you. So, grace simply means labor. Favor minus labor. It is not looking. There's a level of grace you can walk into during this week that when you are even appear in certain places, they will like you. There's a level of grace you can carry here in Ghana that it doesn't matter whether it's MPP or NDC in power, you still carry your, your privileges. There are people whose privileges stop when certain governments change. Grace. And this grace I'm talking about is free. 
is God giving. But you have to ask God to give you that grace. It's not everybody who struggles. And certainly, you don't have to force to be accepted. Where's my team? Number two, grace is promotion without qualification. Is somebody getting me? Let me take it here so I can, can show it to you properly. So going. Who has a power bank here? A power bank, eh? No, you can't take it. do it here. A power bank. I want to give you from the points. So number two, grace is God's promotion without qualification. Wonderful. Technology works, eh? And you put my thing off. Now, you don't have to be qualified to walk into the grace of God that will make you evangelize. Because I've always believed that. Sometimes you want somebody who has gone to education, is educated, is a doctor, is a lawyer. No, no, no. You can read like the way they say they read here, and you move presidents, you move big people. As a matter of fact, you'll be surprised of people, they've listened to too many sweet talk. They are not interested in that again. The president's wife is beating him at home. And you come and tell him, right, in the name of Jesus, that's not the nonsense he wants to listen to. He wants solution. And everybody you see in life has a, a, a problem, has a need. I'm yet to see one human being who doesn't have a need. For those of us who have had the privilege of walking around big men, they have more needs than we have. Because of the way they look and because of their title. I've been to some big man before who was sleeping in pyjamas. And what was he put on? Shoe. He was wearing pyjamas. I'll tell you who it is later. And on the pyjamas, he was wearing socks and shoe. He was lying down. Big man. It's gone off. He had the bodyguards, everything all right, it's all the same. Big man. But inside, he's getting mad. You need to carry yourself with the grace of God, and not how qualified you are. Not your height, not your weight, not your size, but the glory of and that is the grace of God. And in this day and age, anybody at all you can see must be an instrument of evangelism. Tell us what I said. You must be an instrument. You must be a resource person. You must be an instrument of God's work. You must be an instrument of evangelism like Paul said. I'm believing God for Friday. Number three, when grace speaks, protocols are suspended. When grace speaks, protocols are suspended. And what do I mean by protocols are suspended? Certain things will change because of you. Hey, they say the man, he doesn't look at anybody. He doesn't even listen to anybody. He look at your face and he will listen to you. 
They say the man, he doesn't allow people to come in. He will look at you and say, let this one come in. And there are some of you seated here today. The greatest asset you can get is to walk into the grace that make you evangelize. In the early 80s, there was a gentleman that was Brahmaku's convert. Brahmaku had a lot of Muslim converts. Some of the Muslim converts he had was Salif Amwaku. Salif Amwaku is not an Ashanti. He's a Northman. The Amwaku was a name that was given to him by my spiritual father. And another one we had, Elas, Al Alasan. Alasan today is called Paul Anani Amwaku. Maybe I should have also been called Lawrence Tete Amwaku. Our last time when he became converted, had a grace to reach out to rich people. Reach out to rich people. He had a special grace. He had so much grace that, in fact, it was he who converted my father-in-law from being a typical Presbyterian to becoming a Krifi. He spoke to people like Nana Dokuwood. He entered into certain homes and ministered to certain people. He was able to walk into the presidency in Rollins era to speak to people that under normal circumstances you never expect them to listen to the gospel. And any time you see him, he said I've got some cash on him or some money on him, or some TV with him, or some gift with him. Because when he witnessed to the people, the blessing, then also the, the people start making him travel. Alasa was not educated. He doesn't speak English language. And then the He speaks slowly and calmly. And yet still, he will penetrate into you. It was he who first had a privilege to travel to Israel to go and start the first Ghanaian church in Israel in Tel Aviv. When you carry that grace, today it's called Paul Anani. He's killed at last time. And those of you who knows him, we call him Alassan still. Polana Namwaku. <coughs> you need to carry that grace that has nothing to do with qualification. It has nothing to do with labor. It has to do with God's protocol being broken for you. And like I said, grace speaks and protocols are suspended. And certainly, that was what happened to Esther. Protocols were suspended for Esther. It took a 12-year-old boy who carries grace to minister to an older person. How many of you know that sometimes small, small boy can speak to you? Small girl can speak to you. Some of you, you don't see your value, but you are special. You are wonderful. You are great. You are blessed. Listen to me. Don't follow anybody who laughed at you because you didn't speak English right. There are people who speak professor's English. They don't know anything. They are fools. And I can tell you that education is not a big deal. Why is the man condemned me to say, by the grace of God, I'm well educated. My name is Lawrence Tete. My school is traceable. I went to the Budapest University of Economic Sciences. And I went to London School of Economics. My name is Lawrence Tete. If you Google it, you can see it. It's not a trace. Many years ago, somebody asked me, are you sure he went to the university and economics? Are you sure? My father asked me, Nene, did you go to the school for them? I said, no. He said, don't mind them. <laughs> Have you gone to them to ask for employment? I said, no. He said, then, then why do you worry yourself? You don't have to worry yourself about what somebody else is thinking about you. God does not judge you because of somebody's opinion about you. 
You didn't hear what I said. Tell someone what I said. Tell someone what I said. God does not judge you because of somebody's opinion about you. Twice the old boy who was standing by the roadside looking for a bus. Where he was standing was the wrong side. That is not where the bus stops. An older man passed by and saw the boy standing by that side of the road. And said, boy, what are you doing here? So I'm waiting for the bus. Hey, don't be silly. Nobody stands here and waits for the bus. The bus stops at the bus stop. So if you want to go into the bus, go to the... The boy said, so sir, thank you very much. I'll be here. When the bus comes, it will pick me. The man said, hey, I'm an older person. I'm telling you, move to the bus stop. And that is where the bus will pick me. He says, sir, please, thank you very much. But I will stand here when the bus comes to pick me. The older man, I believe, would have said, small boy, you don't know the thing. I am. And you are. He went to stand back, folded his hand. He was waiting for the bus to come and pass. And if he doesn't stop for the boy, the boy will realize that he was saying the right thing. Unfortunately for him, when the pass, bus got to where the boy was, it pulled up to the wrong place and parked for the boy, stopped. The bus doors opened. The bus driver was smiling. The boy was also smiling. And as the boy hopped into the bus, he noticed the older man who kept advising him not to stand there has opened his mouth very wide. He was in awe. He was shocked. What am I seeing? The bus has stopped at the wrong place. The driver is smiling. The boy is smiling. The door is open. The boy is going to the bus. And the boy looked at the man and said, Sir, thank you for all your advice. I know the bus will stop here for me because the driver is my father. When you carry grace, protocols are broken for you. The driver is my father. The driver is your father, whoever you are. Whether you are in the toilet, you are in the bathroom, you are in the kitchen, or in the bedroom, it doesn't matter. If Pastor Steve or Pastor Stanley hear something is happening to their daughter or their son, here now. you see how they leave all of us and go and tend to them first. All of us will do that. I will do that. You will also do that. So I know the bus will stop here for me because the driver is my father. He will stop everywhere for you. And that is why you need that kind of grace. And that is grace. The grace that will make another bus stop for you. If somebody else has passed, it might not stop. I should carry that grace that will make somebody stop for you. I release that unto you today. I, I, I don't want to complicate this morning message at all, but I'm looking forward to Friday. Grace. The next thing about grace is number four. When grace speaks, laws are broken. When grace speaks, laws are broken. And laws are broken because of the grace you carry. And some of you, certain situations have changed. Certain stories have changed. In fact, even the laws of the sea, the laws of the wind, the laws of nature had broken because of some of you. Rain has fallen because of some of you. Certain things have happened because of some of you. God has allowed certain things to take place because of you. Because of you, a whole village, a whole town, a whole city has changed. In fact, you are a career of grace. And that grace, if you walk through, things will change. Laws have broken. Laws were broken several times for David. How can you blow a trumpet and a demon leaves a, a king? Laws are broken. How can you take a catapult and kill a giant with a stone? Laws are broken. How can you take your hands, bare hands, and open the mouth of the lion? Laws are broken. 
How can Eliab, Shama, Abinadab, and the rest come through? And they are not anointed because the laws are broken. First born, zero. Second son, the Ashanti man, zero. And the Ashanti man here. And the Ashanti here. First born, zero. Second born, third born. And yesterday they said, all the seven has passed. And they said they have to bring somebody from the bush. Laws are broken. When you carry grace. When you carry grace, laws are broken. It was broken for him. It was broken. For him. When you carry grace, the laws are broken. May you receive that grace in Jesus' name. 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 May you receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Laws have broken. Laws have broken so much so that this same David will only be 16 and a half years and he can walk into the battlefield and change the plan of the battle. People are running away. A 16 and a half year old, a teenager, a teenager, a teenager. It's not a war master. And yes, they tell all of them, take it easy. I will do it. That is the kind of grace you need to carry from today. Where things work for you. Where laws are broken because of you. Where you have exception because of you. Why they are not allowing people. Hey, there's a level of blessing you can carry. That even when certain things happen, it changes. I'll give you one. I was receiving the foreign affairs minister of Hungary at the airport, Kutuka International Airport. And I was told we cannot use the VVIP because the vice president is receiving the prime minister of Trinidad and. Eh? Eh? Okay. Trinidad and what? It's not tobacco. Listen to me. Laws are broken, though. So we stayed in our lane. The person who is coming is a prime minister. He's stronger. He's more satisfied than the foreign affairs minister. So we stayed in our lane. Then the man got out of the plane, and when he got out of the bright, what did he do? Eh? You remember what he did? What did he do? Yes. And started shouting the name of Dr. Tete. He started shouting, Dr. Tete, Dr. Tete, Dr. Tete. He was in the plane when he landed, when he saw me downstairs. I knew him during full gospel time when he was bala bala, also looking to become a prime minister one day. He's believing God to become something. Now he has become prime minister. He saw me in the plane, landed. I miss Atta in his entourage. You know, the Ghana plane, he was the esteemed vice president. I'm going to receive the man. I was standing side there when they finished before I can receive my guest. When the guy got out of the plane, he saw me. Besides Charles, see, yay, Lawrence Tete, Lawrence Tete. Let the, the vice president walk straight through. What did the vice president ask me? He asked me, is there anybody on this earth that you do not know? He was so, I mean, Sata was so impressed. He kept asking, what, Dr. Tete, is there anybody on this earth you don't know? But the way the man wanted to prove a point that he knows me very well. He said, Lawrence Tete, the evangelist, Lawrence Tete. can only be grace the people who say we should stand aside they were there when the one was standing aside for himself giving me fun this one if you envy it you envy it for nothing I tell you another one that even your father here was involved in grace 
we did a crusade. Listen to this, and I'll give references so that references that are cross checkable. We did a crusade in Ghana for a Thanksgiving service, and President Kufour didn't come. So I went to President Kufour's house. What did I do? What did I tell him? You told him if he would organize another one, mm -hmm. yes, you would make sure that I come, I come from, from London. London. And that you claim you're a Christian. Your Excellency, why do we do Christian program? He didn't come. I told him, I went to his house early in the morning, 6 a.m. I do, I've done that to all of them. Recently, what time did I go to his house? 6 a.m. Yes. on Saturday morning. <laughs> when I got there, what did the soldiers say? When we got there, yeah. they said... Don't worry, these things we say it publicly, so you know what, and these are, you can't exaggerate this thing. When we got there... Mm. The security people said the president has instructed that nobody should come now to the house. Everybody. Now everybody should go to the Flagstaff house. And what did I ask? And then the doctor asked them, am I part of, of the everybody? Every Move <laughs> <laughs> everybody and me. <laughs> when I'm doing crusade, you want to come to the crusade? Then finish uh, me. They quickly went to call the ADC. The ADC came. They told them, I said, Is he himself? On one casa, evangelist, no state on one casa, casa no one. I said, On one casa, I think I was driving myself. I'm parked by the gate, the entrance of the gate. They opened the door. I've done with President Rollins, I've done with President Gufo, I've done with President Mama, I've done with President Tamiz, Professor Tamiz, where you want to do all night. They come to do all night in my house and sleep in my house. I've done it. So I went. So I spent time with the president. When I was coming out, the soldiers look at me and they say, ah, we are no more. You all cannot be the same. You must carry grace that is unstoppable. The laws must be broken because of you. Everybody's not the same. There are certain people, if they don't listen, when you begin to talk, they must. And I'm telling you, in the case of what I say, even your father was involved here, and for illustration purpose. So I had gone to speak to President Gufo. He said he was coming to do the program. What the Ghana Christian Council and all of them that served on the planning committee didn't know was that the thing was started by me. But after they did their program, Pastor Steve's brothers, including him, they put me in closing prayer and they shared the thing among themselves. <laughs> Listen to what grace will do. And then there was a statement that I know, how can I come from London and come and hijack this? Okay, they share the thing. Hey, they say hijack you. <laughs> so the president landed. When the president landed, what did I go to do about the I went straight to the president to speak to him. Man, the president I have a relationship with him. The people who are doing the program, they don't have a relationship with him. <laughs> so what did I go to do with the president? You went and you spoke to I him. I spoke as to him. And talked, then. And then we looked at him. Then we spoke. And then we spoke. Then when I came, what happened? When he went back, he told the Professor, Professor Marty, Marty asked me that what did, what did the, the president, president say? So the president said I should start the program. So they told come. So I took the microphone. <laughs> Ask him. They were sitting upside. They said, ah, who give the man the microphone? I said, the president says, you should, I should quickly take the microphone and start the program because I have no much time to leave. So when I told Pastor Martin, quickly, they introduced me. So we are quickly going to run the program quick. We give the microphone to Reverend Dr. Lawrence Tete. Quick, by the time I have the microphone already, then Pastor Stephen Lawrence said, no, come on, come on. He, Bishop Ajia, sorry, every, all the, the Methodists will praise. Everybody said, ah, how did Lawrence get the microphone? Oh, I was holding the microphone. I'm already talking. I, do you, man of God, do you remember that game? What did you both say? I don't know what I'm having. I'm having a rubber. But that 
time, President Kufo was sitting there. A, 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 a candidate, a, 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 a Tamils was sitting there. A, a, a current president today, a, a, a Akufuadu was also sitting there. Everybody was there. I took the microphone. I did what I would do. I did it to my satisfaction. When I finished, Pastor Steve and others, they were firing backwards. Then I remember one Pastor Wood. He was an apostle of uh, Pentecost. Then he went to confront Professor Mate that how did you give the microphone to Lawrence Sete? Then Professor Mate said, he, The Lawrence Sete you are talking about is standing, the standing there. there. Go, Go ahead. Ahead. <laughs> When they finish. As soon as I finished my own saying then the president said he wants to go. Then they came to tell me that my portion and there at the bottom, uh, I, it will not come again because the place I've used is somewhere. I said, oh, even me, myself, where I want to be is where I was. <laughs> I finished. Later on, this, and, and, and trust me, I'm giving you this as a practical message. You must carry some grace. You don't need to explain yourself to anybody. At that time, the general secretary for Christian Council was uh, Fred Degbe. And Fred Degbe, two years later, I didn't know that he was upset about that thing. He didn't know. So two years later, guess what happened? His son was going to marry my younger sister. And when the thing was being talked, it's like, hey, me and Lawrence, we have to clarify this thing for them. Well, oh. So we met and he said that thing that happened two years ago. I said, oh, nothing happened. <laughs> what I want to do that day? <laughs> I did it. In fact, if you are thinking about that, forget about that. I'm, I said, oh, let me ask Steve Mesa and uh, 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 I said, I've rectified with them a lot. I'm very happy. I took the microphone. I spoke my mind. I was happy. I didn't go home wounded. I went home very happy. I spoke when the president, the former president, the current president, everybody was there. That's why I spoke. I finished. Tell everybody it's grace. 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 When the finish people said, Tuno, the man has come to hijack the microphone. Oh, I have no problem at all. When I was going to the president's house in the morning, they were all sleeping. That's the kind of grace I pray that you carry where you not be wounded. Christianity is supposed to be a blessing, not a burden. Tell someone what I said. So laws are broken when grace speaks. And that is where you can go and evangelize to a Muslim. You can go and evangelize to an atheist. You can go and evangelize to a Buddhist. You can go evangelist to somebody who does not even believe in the gospel at all. And if you carry grace, trust me, it doesn't matter where you are. You don't need money in your pocket to evangelize. Every one of you must be an instrument of evangelism. So I spoke. I finished. I was happy. The president was happy. We were happy. The people were not happy was the least of my problem at all. When I told Pres uh, 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 Dr. Fred Degbe, he laughed. He was shocked. He said, oh, how long he taught this? I said, oh, there was no atmosphere at all. That day, the, when I went to speak to the president and I came and I did what I have to do, I was happy. Anybody who was not happy with me, in fact, I was not even thinking of them. I have done what I've done. I don't know if you have spoken before presidents before. Hey. So I've had a chance to preach to every Ghanaian president. There's no Ghanaian president who has not been to my program before. Yes, I've had a chance to preach to every, and I'm saying this publicly. This your meeting here must be very small, but it's a worldwide meeting. These messages are going everywhere. So I can't stand here and exaggerate anything. There's no Ghanaian president who has not sat under my meeting before. You can quote me anyway. I'm Lawrence Tete. Some of them, they even apply to come. What are you talking about? Methodist crusade, why won't you come? Presby crusade, why won't you come? Especially when it's time for election, you will come, Basa. <laughs> My last Methodist crusade was just about some few weeks before the election. 
and uh, President John Mama was invited, and current President Akufado was invited. He came with an entourage of over 100 and something people. And when they came, coincidentally, they sat on the seats. They came earlier, so they sat on the seat that was uh, prepared for uh, President John Mama. And National Security went to clear them. So they went to sit in another place. That place would so declare them again. So they went to sit in another place. So when I got there, I got upset. And I went to His Excellency, President Nadok. Of course, that time, he was not a president at that time. I said, oh, I'm sorry for what they've done. So I called Carl Wilson, who was then the head of the uh, security for the national security. And I warned him, there will be name of Bimpo, I shall see. You can't do that. That time, nobody even knew he would win election. Today, he's a president. It was a privilege for him that time to speak to me because I was the main speaker for the program. That is grace. Grace is when God opened the heavens for you. And some of you seated here today, you deserve that grace. Amen. Where the heavens will be open on your behalf. Amen. Where you speak and things will happen. Amen. When you speak and doors will open. Amen. When you speak and people will be blessed. When you speak and you see fulfillment, when you speak and you see honor, when you speak and you see the dream come true. And next thing about grace is that when grace speaks, educational qualifications are useless. They are useless. So never you underestimate yourself that because you didn't get any formal education, you cannot speak. It's not true. It is not true. And I came to encourage you this afternoon. It is never true. Hey, maybe you've come from a village or you've come from another country or you've come from a limited resource and because of that, you are not eloquent and affluent like others. Don't let anybody intimidate you. What you need is to carry the grace of God. And when you carry the grace of God, you fulfill. Where did Peter go to school? The show. The school of the show. Yeah. I like that one. The school of the fisheries. The school of the beach. And yes, look at what Peter became. You are special. Put somebody and say, you are very special. When you carry the grace of God, you are very, very special. When you carry the grace of God, you are. You are. You are. You are. The next thing, I don't know what number you are writing now. The next thing, six that. When grace speaks, connections and contacts are needless. When grace speaks, connections and contacts are needless. When grace speaks, connections and contacts are needless. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't need any connection. You don't need any contacts when you carry grace. What did I say? You don't need any connection. You don't need any contact when you carry grace. The grace itself will speak for you. Some of you, the grace will lead you through. Some of you, the grace will cover you. Some of you, the grace will fight for you. Some of you, the grace will open the doors for you. So if you even just a grace you carry alone is enough to speak volumes on your behalf. You don't. You don't. When you carry grace. Who was Joseph's contact? Who was Joseph's connection? Think about that. But for grace. Joseph's contacts. Who was Joseph's connection? But for grace. Who knew Joseph? And what was the history of Joseph? And what got him into prison? And if really what got him into prison 
was worth getting into prison, then who will connect him? But grace has to speak. If you carry grace, it doesn't matter what regime you are. If you carry grace, it doesn't matter who is in power. When you carry grace, it doesn't matter who you know. If your favor was with Rollins, what happened when Kufour came? If your favor was with Kufour, what happened when Atamels came? If your favor was with Atamels, even within the same party, what happened when your mama came? If your mama was your contact and your connection, what happens in the time of Nana I don't know. I don't need them. I need the grace of God. I don't need to limit myself to them. I need the grace of God. As a matter of fact, when that grace works, then everything shall be made manifest. And grace can even change your personality. As a gentleman here, where is my bodyguard, Bright? Come. Bright is a police sergeant. Bright came to work with me officially as my bodyguard. Over the years, and most of you Christians don't understand why should a man of God have a bodyguard. Wait until you become a public figure. And you see the need. Some of us are not faceless. Some of us are visible. We are exposed. We are in the face of people. It's not everybody who accepts us. I've had people slap me before while I'm preaching. Oh, yes, North Connection Assemblies of God. Oh, yes, physically. Church of Pentecost, Dakuma, what did he do to me? The Catlas. Muslim, because I said. Uh, every other God is dead. Only Jesus is alive. The guy says, Shiggy in Azua. <laughs> Shiggy in Azua. Carlos in the church. Sometimes when you finish crusade, which you put Jesus? Ambrose. Finish crusade. They know Dr. Tete has come from London. They assume that you carry everything. You have no idea. When I was younger in ministry, when I see a man of God walking with some aid, I said, Charlie, who is looking for you? Until my people had their hands broken and things. So this, I changed bodyguards until I got this young man called Bright. How long have you been with me now? I replaced 10 years. 10 years. <laughs> so you have to go now, eh? I wanted to hear his testimony, then you go. Yes, yeah. So over the years, you try to be very mindful about what is happening, what is going on, what is in town, and you have to be, the popular and the bigger you become, the more vulnerable you get in society. How many of you know that? You don't realize that. When you become popular, your house is not even safe. Why do you think an arm robber will walk into Steve Manson's house? Why didn't he walk into any of the associate's house? He knows he's a potent man. He will be the most resource person. And so sometimes, security is eminent. In fact, in this day and age, Christians, we even have to be smart and wiser. Because if you become vulnerable, the enemy will take you for granted. So this man came, and uh, he was supposed to serve and what did I ask you? One day we went to a program and I was praying. So daddy saw me praying and asked me why I didn't go to school and rather chose to become a police officer. So when he asked me that question, I told him um, about my life. That I had never even stayed for 30 minutes of my life with my father before. So apparently I had nobody to support me to go to school. But the interesting thing was that Immediately after finished saying that one, what came out from his mouth was that he will be my father and he will make sure whatever my father could not do for me, he will do it for me. That is grace. 
That is somebody receiving grace. And then what happened from there? And then within that week, fortunately, there were admitting students at the University of Ghana here, Legon. And he took me to school and got me admitted to start a degree program. And he sponsored me, actually. Sometimes he himself, he drives me to school. He drives me to school, at least. <laughs> but you, you don't want to drive Bright to school. Bright is a showman. When you drive Bright to school, he wants everybody to know it was Dr. Tete who brought him to school. <laughs> so when you are moving the car, he will knock the car and say he left something in the boot. And all the people in the area will come and say, ah, then people will think, hey, Dr. Tete, thank you for the school. <laughs> Sometimes I'll stop and say, Bright, anything you have from the car, take it. But you went and you finished, and you are graduated in what today? And I have a degree in um, psychology and information studies. That's what I have now. Now today, Bright is the most youngest sergeant in the history of Ghana. What the name they call him? They call him Baby Sergeant. Baby Sergeant. Among the uh, I'm a police force, they call him Baby Sergeant. Is it for me? Ah, okay. They call him. No, that's okay. They call him Baby Sight. Now, the grace fell on right that today, how many countries have you been to since you started working with me? 26. Now. When I travel, I travel with him. Sometime on one day, how many countries do we go to? About four or five. Which one is your favorite that's in four or five? The France. Uh, and then because I had something happen to me in France that I can never forget in my life. There was this auntie, actually, it was not my family member, but a friend's distant some some somebody somewhere. That because she was rich, beautiful, so we always want to relate. Um, so we all called her auntie. So I got daddy took me to France and I called her that I'm in France. She couldn't believe. Ah, yeah, are you sure? I yeah, oh. said, Ma, we were friends. <laughs> so she couldn't believe it until she came. She said, Okay, wherever you are, show me, I'll come and see where you are. We just said, We were Hilton Hotel, presidential lunch. So she should come and see me there. <laughs> but you two, you go some. So what happened was that she came. Professor, somebody prophesied, brother. Okay, these people want to receive something. God picked me from the Mary Clay. And if today I have something to say to you, may the Lord change your story. Wherever my feet has entered, you enter some. Whatever it is that has been a dumbfounding testimony, you begin to share yours. God is about to change your story. People will look at you and you'll be a surprise to people. Because that is what God has done to me. And he's about to do a better one for you. So, Bright had to finish. He became a bachelor degree holder. Today, as we speak now, maybe in a few months or in the next few weeks, we'll be made a chief inspector. Grace clears the way for you. So by the time finally he's leaving me now, he's not just leaving me as a police officer, he has also become a preacher. When people returned from Israel, about three years ago, yes. I left them. I came a day earlier. Him and where is Pastor Barnabas? Pastor Barnabas and Reverend Matthew. I left them. I left all the rest. I left them in Israel. They were praying too much. I left them. <laughs> so I left and I came to Ghana. So they just came to Ghana. But it carries grace. Now, this grace is that. There is no president I have had to meet that they don't meet. 
So grace even brings back your confidence. Grace brings back your confidence. And that confidence makes you witness to the unwitnessable. We must allow evangelism to enter into every nook and cranny of our community. There are certain people who are waiting for you to speak to them. Today, Bright's life is affecting the life of his family. The people who didn't believe in church and the people who even didn't believe church works can today tell that Bright, Bright is calling you from hungry. It's calling you from where? <laughs> what are, what are some of the, what are I, some of the when, when I go to, the, the interesting thing is that, Danny, when I put things on Facebook, when I put my uniform there, the family members, some of the friends that love me, they don't comment too. But when I put um, pictures of maybe Israel, France, Netherlands, Belgium, and the, and the Europe and the things, they, they, they like it more. Somebody will like your picture. Somebody will like your photo. Somebody will like your videos. They, they, they like it. And when the, the interesting thing is that when they see that I'm also preaching, they like it more. You begin to preach. You begin to win souls for Christ. There's one thing that I've realized in life. That you cannot serve under an anointing without the grace changing your life. You didn't hear? Okay. This wouldn't hear it. You cannot serve under an anointing and losing the grace of that anointing. So if I were you, if I was polishing shoe, I would add iron into it. You didn't get it. If I were you, I would do everything to serve under an anointing and carry the grace of the anointing. How can it happen that a policeman will stand somewhere and preach and after that somebody will come and say, I mean, I've had the healing. Miracles happen. That is the work of grace. That yes, me. That is what God used some people from the Mary Clay to do. Your story is going to be different. Your story is going to be the better version of mine. Keep on winning souls. Keep on serving. God will never disappoint you. Because he never disappointed me. Today we speak and convey things that were not happening in my family are happening. My younger brother, as I speak, is in Europe. Is it by money? It's just by the grace of God. One person stepped into my life. And that has changed the story. I pray from today. I pray from today. I pray from today. I pray from this moment and this hour. Things will begin to happen to you. That you begin to give testimonies. What you change life. Keep on doing whatever you are doing. Do it the best. And God will shock you with a miracle. You know what? Grace. The grace that can transform a policeman into the preaching of the gospel. Today, Bright is witness. In fact, we went to Israel. He and Barnabas, where is Barnabas? They were witnessing, even by songs, to Jews. What were some of the things that happened in the Sea of Galilee? A lot of miracles happened. Yes, yes because we're singing one of the songs. And this, this, the Jewish people were also following that some of them got converted to become Christians. The white people, they were singing a song with us and they came to that. They, they asked the meaning, what is the meaning of the song? And they learned the song. People who were supposed to be upholding that, receiving that. And that song we sang, that caught flame was We are marching to the star Beautiful, beautiful sun We are marching up to the 
This is an introduction to the message I intend to preach on Friday night. When grace speaks, doubts are cleared. Doubts are cleared. And some of you, that grace will speak and you'll be yourself. You'll be yourself. You'll not be looking after your shoulders. You will be yourself when grace speaks you will be yourself doubts are clear <coughs> doubts are clear i am going to also be anointing people on friday how many of you are, are here on friday night good part of the program i'm going to be anointing people i will believe in god that destinies and lives will change and that will have the impartation of grace for evangelism. Amen. I tell you, some of you, you'll be surprised. You will be proud to call certain people your spiritual converts. And there are some people, anytime they hear the word of God, you are the first they will remember. God, through you, they receive the gospel. What happens if you want people like that in your life? That you witness to certain people. Hey! That you be the first person to convert the fetish priest in your village. You be the first to convert the MP in your community. You be the first to bring conversion, conversion power to that chief justice or that justice or that judge or that secure judge in your community. It does happen. And for all you know, God is going to use your very premises to do it. Because I still have a story about an evangelist that went to preach in the village. He had a very wild crusade. The crusade was well attended. First day, second day. On the third day, it was clouded. It looked as if it was going to rain. An evangelist in his usual noise, like we make a lot of noise, he said it would not rain. That if it rain, as an evangelist, he would throw away his Bible. Unfortunately for the evangelist in the middle of the crusade, it rained heavily. It was a downpour. Heavy rain. People were shaking their head and going home. That after today, dear. The evangelist was like, after today, dear. <coughs> so the evangelist went to pack his things. He left the village. He was very embarrassed and upset. God had disappointed him. He was walking out of the village. When he got to some place, he met some people. When they saw him, they were running away. Are you chasing us here too? He said, what is it? Evangel he said, don't call me evangelist. I've been disappointed. He said, you are a liar. You are a man of God, evangelist. He said, when you started your program, the first three days, we wanted to kill you. And any time we try to shoot at you, angels come to cover you. Any time we try to do anything, angels can cover you. So on the third day, we decided to stand on the hilltop to do what? To shoot at you. And so we prepare our gunpowder and everything to shoot you. And then you, we saw the clouds. And when we were about to take the gunpowder away so the rain will not fall, you made that pronouncement that the rain will not fall. We believed you because of what you've done the previous day. And we still were waiting for healing time so we can shoot you there was no healing time until the rain poured down and all our gunpowder and everything finished then we realized that we have no power so we're leaving the village for you now you've come to catch us here what do you want us to do the man said wow so all along god was doing that because of me He had a grace to evangelize, but he did not know. 
I speak to you today that whatever grace God has placed on you, it will work, it will be well, it will be great, it will be favorable, it will be blessed in the name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your two hands. Say with me, say, Father, I walk into that grace. I walk into that grace in an exceptional way. In an exceptional way. That I will. And I will be a witness. Be a witness. By grace. By grace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And let me say a very big thank you to the leadership of this ministry. These programs are very great programs. We look forward to it. It has brought men and women from all walks of life. And want to thank God for the life of Pastor Steve and Pastor Stanley, that they will live long and stay long to see the glory of God. We are marching. I beautiful, beautiful sun. Young, we are marching up up to Zion. Young, the beautiful city of God. I'm looking for three people to tell me what they pick from this message. Come here, quick. Put three people quickly. Make it five, quickly, come here. Yes. I've learned that no matter your level in life, if you join yourself with Christ and put all your strength and your value in evangelism, God can pick you from nowhere and break you to somewhere. Thank you. That's the greatest thing I've learned today. God bless you. Thank you. I've learned that Grace changes personality and that it, it changes, it clears doubt as well. It makes Speak you know out yourself. So I hear you. It changes personality. An encounter with grace can change your personality. Amen. Hallelujah. What I have learned also is that it is not by might, not by power, but by the grace of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I also learned that grace has spent every natural law. Amen. I have also learned that to be evangelist, to serve God, is a great work. It's a great opportunity for us and for me, myself. I've learned that grace defies all odds. No matter what the circumstances, you can get ahead because of grace. Amen. God bless you. Wow. 